Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. Yes, to me, he is so wonderful. Our Jesus is wonderful, and he's yours, and he's mine. Hallelujah. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this April 11. April 11. We are sinking our teeth, if you want to say that, <laughs> into spring. And how wonderful it is. I hope that you are feeling some spring up in the northern areas like we are down here on this April 11th. We will be reading, and we are now in a new book, Yehoshua. Scott has taught us Joshua, we would say. Yehoshua. Baruch haba b'ashem ad Hashem. Blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. And there's more to that, too, <clears throat> that I don't pronounce very well. So I'll just let it go with the suggestion of how the Hebrews say it. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove, and they came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and they lodged there before they crossed over. Rest up overnight, because now we're going to cross the Jordan. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priest, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, got new leadership moving here. <clears throat> the Lord has taken Moses home, and now all of the responsibility is in Joshua's hands. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders, wonders among you. And then Joshua spoke to the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and they went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, when you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hevites and the Perizzites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites, all those people groups. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. Now, therefore, take for yourselves Twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, 
<clears throat> shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off. The waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand up as a heap. A heap. So the Lord is really going to reveal himself to them in mighty, mighty signs and wonders, isn't he? So it was. When the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as those who bore the Ark came to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests who bore the Ark dipped in the edge of the water. Oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine they've been told this? Can you imagine now them putting their feet in to see what's going to happen? Woo! <clears throat> the priests who bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water for the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of the harvest that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zeratan. So the waters that went down into the sea of the Arabah, the salt sea, failed and they were cut off and the people crossed over opposite Jericho. And then the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. Only the hands Lord could do that. I mean, it is indicating those waters had just stopped and split. And as they cross over, they're on dry, dry ground. <clears throat> and all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. And we move along to chapter 4 of Yehoshua. And it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves Twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Going to have a memorial. Those stones are going to stay there. And then Joshua called the 12 men whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. And each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder. And we're not talking small stones. Get a big one. Put it up there on your shoulder. According to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it crossed over the Jordan the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. Forever. <clears throat> and the children of Israel did so, just as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones from the midst of the Jordan, as the Lord had spoken to Joshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them to the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. 
And then Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood. And they are there to this day <clears throat> at this reading. So the reading I'm reading, okay? So the priests who bore the Ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord had commanded Joshua to speak to the people according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua. And the people hurried and crossed over. I bet they did. I mean, how would you feel? This huge amount of water is standing like a wall and you're supposed to walk through it. I would have hurried too. <laughs> and then it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over that the ark of the Lord and the priests crossed over in the presence of the people. And the men of Reuben, the men of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh crossed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses had spoken to them. All the armed ones. You suppose they were wondering if some enemy might greet them on the other side? About 40,000 people prepared for war crossed over before the Lord for battle to the plains of Jericho. Mm. I have a sweet picture of that in my mind. On that day, the Lord exalted Yehoshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they had feared Moses all the days of his life. So now <clears throat> Joshua is experiencing a major change in how the people look toward him, how they act probably around him, right? Because they feared, and this was a holy fear, a fear that doesn't go away, a fear that has an expectation with it for good to come. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Command the priests who bear the ark of the testimony to come up from the Jordan. And Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come up from the Jordan. And it came to pass when the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord had come from the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priest's feet touched the dry land, that the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. Wow. Wow. We want to see the replay movie, don't we? <laughs> and I do believe there's one to be seen in heaven. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month, and they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. And then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Forever. Oh, how exciting. <clears throat> how very, very exciting. We move right along to the wonderful gospel of Luke, Lucilus. 
Lucilus. So he told a parable in chapter 14, and this is verse 7. He told a parable to those who were invited when he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, when you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more honorable than you be invited by him. And he who invited you and him come and say to you, give place to this man. And then you begin with shame to take the lowest place. Oh, that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? But when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest place so that when he who invited you comes, he may say to you, friend, go up higher. And then you will have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. For whoever exalts himself <clears throat> will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. And then he also said to him who invited him, when you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. How about that statement? <clears throat> there are wonderful things being stored up for you and me. And that should give us hope, great hope, for the future. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I, I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, <clears throat> and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. And still another one, another one said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. And then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. <clears throat> then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Oh, are you getting this parable? Are you getting this parable? Now great multitudes went with him. And he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, <clears throat> wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, 
He cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it <clears throat> begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Think about that one for yourself. Are you ready to forsake all that you have? To follow the Lord and be taught by him. That's what a disciple is. A student. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill. But men throw it out. He who has ears to hear. Let him hear. Are you hearing this? I pray you are. <laughs> and we move along to Psalm 80. Psalm 80, and we've been taught that to say Psalm as the Israelites do, Tehillim, Tehillim, Tehillim 80. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is another Psalm that was given to the chief musician and he got busy writing music and parts for the instruments and he set it to a tune they called The Lilies, The Lilies, a testimony of Asaph. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, Stir up your strength and come and save us. Restore us, O oh God. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. O oh Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? And do you notice that God suddenly shined <laughs> behind me? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in great measure. You have made us a strife to our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved you have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared room for it and caused it to take deep roots, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow and the mighty cedars with its boughs. She sent out her boughs to the sea and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down her hedges so that all who pass by the way pluck her fruit? The boar, B-O-A-R, the animal, who pass by the way 
pluck her fruit. The boar out of the woods uproots it, and the wild beast of the field devours it. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see, and visit this vine. How about that? And the vineyard which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made strong for yourself. It is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man whom you made strong for yourself. And then we will not turn back from you. Revive us, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Oh, isn't that beautiful? What a plea from the heart. From the heart. We now turn to Mishle, Proverbs chapter 12. Picking up with verse 27 and 28. Proverbs 12, 27 and 28. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting. Imagine going hunting, shooting something that is good to eat, and you don't cook it. You just had your little moment of fun. <clears throat> <clears throat> and you let that animal just deteriorate. The lazy man, the Lord calls him, does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is man's precious possession. In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. The path of of righteousness, following after the Lord, following how he shows you and tells you in his word, how he is, how he looks at things. Follow that. Follow the way of righteousness, not your own selfish path, but the path that he has cut out for you. How do you know where it is? That's a very good question. <clears throat> The best I can answer is every day, it's a very, very good thing to pray, to ask the Lord to show you what his path is for you today, and then just trust him. Trust him and watch where you walk, watch where you go, watch what you say. If you need to apologize, don't be too prideful to just walk away and not do it. But apologize. Set things in order. Keep things straight. As straight as we can. And the Lord will work with us. He will see that we are trying. In the way of righteousness is life. And in its pathway, there is no death. How about that? Beautiful. Connie's written it right out there for you. And that finishes up the wonderful word of God for today. But you can continue. And that's what I hope you do. I hope that you take more time. I'm going to sign off and I hope you stay right where you are. And reread or read on. Be free in the Lord. And enjoy his word. That is the whole point of our coming together. And I feel your presence. And it's so beautiful for me. So very beautiful. Thank you for coming. Let's end up with prayer. <clears throat> Precious Father God, we all want to thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we have it. We have it in our hands, 
And Lord, our intent is to hide it in our heart, to have it in our minds, to have it in our spirit. So that if the book is taken away through upsetting things on this earth, they can't take it. No one can take it out of your heart. Please, Lord, give us a discipleship attitude. Help us and show us on a daily basis how to take in your word, how to remember, how to repeat it, how to write it out. Put it on the refrigerator. Put it on the bathroom mirror. Put it something in your car, wherever. Scriptures that you know help you, lead you, cause you to stay on his path. Oh, it becomes a wonderful life. It becomes fun. It becomes something you can hardly wait to do. And you will enjoy life. And God will direct you around. I, I've seen this in my life time and time again. Things that would have happened, he took me around it. And when I look back, what could have happened didn't. So walking with him is the most exciting path there is. Father God, <clears throat> help us please to stay on your path. Lord, we hold up Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu. I pray for this great man, a true man of God, a man <clears throat> who has studied the scriptures. <clears throat> he has written a wonderful account now, his own autobiography, and it's entitled Bibi, B-I-B-I. -I. I highly rec recommend that you read, and then you'll understand more who God has at the headship at this time. It's important to find out what God is doing. So, Father God, we're asking you put a special blessing upon Bibi Netanyahu and his family. His family, Lord, his sons, his wife. Precious Lord, upon the Knesset of people. And help them, Lord, <clears throat> to get together. Tonight, not keep arguing and fighting with one another, but get together and do what is good for Israel, for her people. Thank you, Lord, that we see you openly bringing your people home from all across the world. And what a beautiful, beautiful thing. Thank you for that, Lord. We hold up America. <clears throat> and others are holding up their countries. Please, hold up a place that is special to your heart or a country you feel the Lord has put upon your heart. Father God, we hold up all of these other countries of the world to you in prayer, knowing that prayer <clears throat> is the weapon of choice that you delight in that you answer, that you will listen as we faithfully pray. And you will teach us how to pray for each situation. And those of you <clears throat> who are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I pray that every one of you will exercise your wonderful gift of tongues. And if not, you will seek the gift of tongues, read about it, talk to someone that you know, one of those crazy people like Jane, and ask. That's what I did, because I didn't understand what was happening. Ask and be filled today with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And then, when you want to pray <clears throat> for our dear President Trump, and you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, the Holy Spirit does. 
And he will use you to pray for exactly what's important, whether you know it or not, because you will be praying in the spirit. And I'm going to pray for President Trump right now in the spirit. And I'm asking you to join. Join me. And continue on. Father God, we hold up America to you. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would reveal to us truth. Any hidden things, any things that are being done or decided that are destructive to our country, that are taking our country down. Please, Lord, we're asking that you bring answers to that. We're asking, Lord, that you bring righteous people to fill all of those positions. Please, Lord, we hold up the coming year of elections now and lay a foundation of prayer. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would put it upon the heart of those that you want to run for offices and make it plain, please, Lord, to them that they will have the confidence and the boldness to run for an office. Lord, I want to thank you for these military particularly so many young military men who have been trained as soldiers, who have gone and served. And now they've come home and they say they're going to run for such and such office. Father God, every one of those who has been called by you, I am asking, Lord, that you make it very plain that you raise up people to support them, to help make it happen. And Lord, we are believing, we are believing that our best days are ahead of us. They're not behind us. I'm going to believe our best days are now, today, and ahead of us. And all God's people continue down with your prayers Continue on in the name and to the glory of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, the precious Lord, the Messiah, all God's people, continued on their own. Amen. Love you all so much. Bye-bye.